Hi everybody, welcome. It is Janelle Cooper and I um, am coming to you on location. I'm at my daughter's house in Tennessee, so I don't have any of my normal setup. I don't have my bright lights and all that stuff. So um, you're gonna notice that this, the quality of this video might be a little different than what you're used to. So the beginning of July, I made this cute little bag for 4th of July on the airplane here. So, and it was super fast and super easy. And I just wanna show you how I did it. All of this yarn, these are actually what they call fat quarters. They're used for quilting. And my daughter got them on clearance years and years ago. So they were like, I can't even remember. They were like 25 cents or some silly thing for a package of them. And so I cut them down into strips and then I used them to make this cute little bag. See how fun? So today I'm gonna to show you how to do the same thing. I'm gonna show you how to cut the strips down. I've already prepared some. I think we're gonna do a cute little Halloween bag. I wasn't sure I was gonna go back and forth. They're so fast, maybe I can do two bags for you on this. We'll do just like an everyday bag and some pretty colors. Cotton yarn to make it kind of Halloween-y looking. So I figure we'll, we'll do that really quickly. This is I Love This Yarn. <laughs> My daughter's cat's gonna come in and say hello. Hello, Mel. <laughs> um, so this is just some cotton yarn that I use. You can use anything, really. You can use acrylic or whatever. Um, I, I like using cotton yarn because it's less likely to stretch. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to cut this into strips. I know that sounds really simple, and you can just cut long strips if you want to, but these ones I did one long continuous strip on a piece of fabric, so um, I'm gonna pick some for this color scheme, and I'm gonna show you how to do that with this. So for a while there, as my daughter was exploring her creative side, um, and still is, and will continue to do so her whole life probably, um, she was loading up on all of these little pieces of fabric. Um, I'm not sure what she intended them for to make, but she's kind of over that now. And I totally get it, much like myself. I'm a Gemini, so I tend to like be really into something and then get over it. Um, so what it did was it left me with a cabinet full of these scraps that are really pretty, that they just, they need to be something. So we're gonna make them into some cute little baskets and bags, um, but I'm gonna show you how to cut it. First thing I do, and you guys, you can get all like specific and like, you know, there, I'm sure that there are lots of places where you can learn how to do this and it's gonna teach you how to make perfectly straight lines and all that stuff. I eyeball everything, you guys, because we're doing this basket and these little pieces of um, scrap fabric are going to be bunched up anyway, so you're not even gonna see the edges, so it doesn't matter if they're not perfect. First thing I do is I cut off this little salvage edge here, just, you know, again, you probably won't notice it, but just to get started so everything's kind of the same color. Okay, so then, I just kind of eyeball it. I mean, I don't even know, that's probably like, I don't even have my measuring tape with me. I feel lost without all of my utensils. Um, that's probably like, what, an inch? So just go in and then just as you're doing it, just kind of eyeball it with the edge there and try to get as close to straight as you can. Okay, and then you just go down here to about one inch from the edge, and then you're gonna turn around, and you're gonna jump over, pretend like that's just like this is continuing this way, and you're just gonna jump over and do another inch over this way. And you're just gonna zigzag back and forth like that all the way across the fabric till you get to the very end of it. And then I'll show you how to make it into a ball and then we can begin the project. Okay, so you end up with this like ball of this long strip of fabric right here. And I'll just show you really quickly all I do to roll it into a usable ball that's not quite so messy is um, when you get to the part where it's like a little square there, I just roll it over on itself and then continue this way. We are going to do some really cute um, Halloween black and white cloth, and I'm gonna do it with white cotton yarn. And hopefully you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing really well. I'm gonna just go ahead and start with a slip knot, and we're gonna chain. Um, this one I believe was 15 chains. This is the beginning of it right here. Um, this one is a, is a bigger bag, and I started off with 25. 
across. So if you wanted to make a bigger, like a trick or treat bag or something, you can. Um, but I think just for camera purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, like just maybe 15. We'll make it a little bag. Okay, so I have chained 15, and then what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna take this and fold it in half. And I cut like, actually, it doesn't really matter. I think um, when I was showing you on camera, I think I was cutting like an inch. That's more like um, three quarters of an inch there. But you can, it doesn't really matter because they're all gonna be bunched together anyway. So um, if the wider it is, the bulkier it'll be. But as you can see, it all ends up to kind of be about the same anyway. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to be perfect. So anyway, I just lay this on the side and we're actually gonna, so I'm gonna chain one. So that's 15, we're gonna go up one. Not that it matters really. You can do whatever number you want. Then we're gonna go ahead and pull that in half and lay it on the side. And we're actually going to go over the top of this and into the chain. So skip that one, go into the next one pull up a loop, go up high, yarn over, and then do your single crochet. And then you're just gonna do that into all the way down to get to the bottom. Don't worry about this extra little guy. In fact, I'm gonna give it a little more than that because we're gonna um, kind of work it in as we come around. The, at the very beginning, it's hard to hold on to everything, so just be ready for that. Um, but after we get the first round done, it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a loop, pull it up high, because you want it to be kind of loose, yarn over, and then go through both those loops just to make a single crochet, and you're gonna do that all the way down. This is very similar to the um, rope basket that I did. I did uh, just a couple videos ago, I did a, a little basket made out of Dollar Tree yarn and Dollar Tree rope. And it's basically the same concept. You're just going over fabric instead of going over rope. So we're down here to the final loop, the final chain. You're gonna go into the same chain three times and we're gonna go around the corner and come back the other direction. So we're gonna go One, two, and three. Okay, so we've made our little loop there on the end. Now, if you want to, you can actually take the original tail and you can just put it in the yarn or in the fabric and kind of hide it in there and you can work in your ends that way. Or you can work them in later if you want, but this is kind of a nice clean look you don't see it as much okay so continuing on now you're going to go in the bottom loop of that chain so you already did the two top loops but now we're going to go in the bottom of it <laughs> train in the background You're gonna kind of work this fabric in with this fabric. So just kind of tuck it in there. And if you need to like maybe pull on it a little bit or trim it either way. and then go over all of that. Okay, 
When you get down to the end, we're going to do the same thing like we did before, only this time there's no like, got to find the bottom loop there. This time you've already got a stitch in it from the starting side, so we're going to do two more. One, two. Okay, so we're gonna continue without joining. We're just going to go in a spiral around this thing. So continue onward, go into the top of the single crochet of that first row, and you're going to go ahead and do a single crochet. I'm actually gonna do another, it looks like it needs one more right here. So, you know, sometimes you kind of just got to go by feel so that it looks good. Okay, so now let's go into the top of this single crochet. Hopefully you can see that. My yarn is right there. Okay, so now you're just gonna do the tops of the single crochet. When you get down to this round part down here, I'm gonna show you how to grow that. We're basically doing half of a circle on each end. So um, I'll show you how to do that. And then um, from there, it's pretty easy. You just keep expanding it until it's as wide and as long as you want it to be. So everybody does ovals a little differently. Um, this is the way that I did mine, and it doesn't really matter as long as you're adding stitches on the end so that um, it expands on there. So what I did, okay, so on the first row, I added two stitches to each of those three stitches on the end. On the next one, it's two and one two and one, two and one. On the next one, it's two and two singles, two together and then two singles and then two together. So that's how we're gonna, it's basically half of a circle that you're doing on the ends there. So that's what we're gonna do on here. So you're gonna add two stitches to each one of those three on the end. So you're basically adding three stitches every row to that to those end pieces. So six total. Okay, so two, 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 and two. Now we're gonna go just singles all the way down. And go ahead and do that. You're gonna you're gonna do the same thing on this end, and then just meet me here, and I'll show you how to expand it on the next row. Okay, so we're at the end. Um, we went all the way around. We did what we the same thing over on this side, and now we're going on the next round. And this is where we did the two stitches in one stitch. There, when you do that, when you come back around, you're gonna actually do two stitches in the first stitch. like that. And then on the second stitch of that increase right there, we're going to do just one single. And then the same thing in the next one. So two stitches in that. On the first one, you're going to do two stitches. So you're going to increase it. One, two. And then on the next one, you're just going to do a single. Just like you would do for a circle, only you're only doing it halfway around. Okay, the next one, two stitches. Increase, and then there's the single. Okay, so that gets us around there. We're gonna continue, we're gonna do the same exact thing on this side. Okay, so just to kind of demonstrate, there's an increase, so these are the increases on the bottom, so the three increases, which is basically two stitches in that stitch, two stitches there, two stitches there. In the first stitch of the increase, you're gonna do an increase on the next row, and then just a single stitch, and then increase, 
and then just a single stitch. Increase, single stitch, and then singles all the way around. On the next row, you're gonna go, go to where the increase is, right? And on the first one of the two, you're gonna do your increase. And then you're gonna go single, single. And then on the next one, that's an increase, you're gonna do an increase in the first one and then single, single. And it'll keep expanding out so there's more singles in between each row you do until you get to how, the length and the width that you want. I'm gonna show you how to make that work too. So when you get to, you can't go any further on that, what we're gonna do, at least this is how I've been doing it. Um, I've tried different methods. You can twist it, you can do like, when I found that when you just twist it around each other, you get little pokey parts that stick out. I'm gonna um, do it like this. We're going to fold this out so it's wrong sides out, wrong side out, like that. And then you're gonna bend this over the top so that it's a right side on top and then fold it in half and then just continue going around. It's awkward, but it's nice and stable. Okay. Okay, so just continue doing that. Just increase on the ends by three stitches every time. And then when you get to the width you want, I'll show you how to, what to do to just go up the sides. I'll show you how to change fabric. I'll show you how to change yarn. And, um, and then we'll, we'll just keep going until we get to the part with the handles. And then, and then just the top. It's really easy. It's a very simple project. Okay, so coming into the last row of increases before I start going up the side, um, I feel like you can really see those increases really easily now. See how there's two together there, two there, two there and two there. And then in between are the singles. So increase, single, increase, single, increase. And then on the next one, it's increase, single, single, increase, single, single. And then up here, it's increase, single, 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 increase, single, 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 like that. Final increase. Okay, from now on, it's just singles all the way around. And you're gonna start, now that you're gonna start doing just, you're not gonna do any more increases and you're just single, single, single in a spiral all the way around, it'll start to go up the sides like this, like so. Once we get up here, I'll show you, you're not gonna, um, you're not going to decrease. We're just, I'm just gonna show you how to tighten your, your rows up a little bit to make it do that sort of inward. And we'll do the handles and then we'll do the top. Super easy. And I'll show you how to change fabric too. It's probably pretty self-explanatory, but I'm gonna show you anyway, just for fun. Okay guys, so here I am so far. I've gone up about this far on the side and I have about this much of my black fabric left. So what I wanna do is I wanna change color um, to the orange, right? So that we have a little bit of black and then we're gonna change to white while we're white fabric while we're still doing the orange. So there's the transition in between there. And then I think I'm gonna to top it with purple. So give it give it kind of a, a spooky vibe, spooky Halloween vibe. So I'm gonna show you how to change yarn real quick. I like to change yarn on the ends because there's no way to perfectly hide it. So um, it's it's like less noticeable on the ends. So I'm just gonna go ahead and if you know of a way to perfectly hide it, um, please share. But I think that um, if I messed up the continuity of the stitches, um, it'll be just as, it'll stand out just as much as if I just change yarn. So I'm gonna just show you what I do. Okay, so right here on the end. So what I'm gonna do with the stitches, I'm gonna pull it down so that it's not quite as tall. And then the next stitch, I'm gonna do the same thing, only this time I'm gonna pull up the orange, or actually here. We're gonna do part of the white, like that, and then we're gonna finish it with the orange. Okay, pull that one down. 
And then we're going to weave our ends in in the yarn or in the uh, material. So you can go ahead and trim your white or whatever color you're using. And then just fold the material around it. And then continue on. So when I said pull it tight, what that does is it just makes that line like there's going to be, it's going to go, oh, I'm white and then I'm orange, right? But we're going to actually make it a little bit smaller by pulling it down so it's not quite so noticeable. It looks a little bit more gradual. And um, you'll see it, you'll see that gradualness better after the next couple of rows. Here, let me get this in here real good. Gradualness. I'm pretty sure that's a word I just made up. Okay. And then continue on. And if you want, you can like go in here and grab the white and kind of pull the white tight. Pull the orange tight. And it kind of like brings it together so it's not quite so noticeable, hopefully. But it hasn't bothered me on the other ones, so. and then go back up to your tall single crochets. We're gonna do orange for a while and then I'm gonna to switch to the um, light fabric, the um, black on white instead of white on black, if that makes sense, the opposite basically. Okay guys, so we're coming to the end of this fabric so I'm gonna go ahead and change it and I give it quite a ways and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fold them together. Actually, let's do this. We'll do half white. So lay the black one out or lay one side out, lay the other one inside of it, like halfway across it. And then we're going to wrap the white around that and the black around the white. So basically one side is black and one side's white. And then we're just going to twist. Doesn't have to be perfectly lined up or anything. It doesn't really matter because obviously, as you can tell, it's not like you see a lot of details. But that's just to keep it from coming undone. But also it keeps it um, kind of a gradual turn. So crochet over the top of that. Especially when you're changing from something that's so different from like a dark, dark color to a light, light color. You kind of want it to be a little more gradual. Transition has been made. This yarn's a little, or this fabric's a little beat up because I used it in the last project and then I took it apart. So it's already been a basket and now I'm remaking it. If you would like to know how to do one of these as a circle um, so that you can like make it as like a planter or something, um, or just like, I guess you would call it a plant cozy because it's not really, or a koozie because it's not really um, strong enough to stand up by itself, but you could just put it around a, like a plastic planter. Um, check out the one that I did with the rope and the Dollar Tree yarn, how to do one as a circle rather than an oval. Also, if you check out my, um, the Scrappy Basket video, or it's actually how to make any basket video, um, the second 
basket that I make is the scrappy basket and that's kind of similar to this. It's just done with multiple strands of yarn and that's done in the round and you can um, use that same basic concept. Okay, so keep going until you're ready to, um, so you've learned how to change yarn, you've learned how to change fabric. And then I'm gonna change yarn again, probably up here. We'll see if I like it, cause I kind of like just the orange and black and white. So we'll see. And then what's left is the handle and the top um, border. Or actually, it's just a crab stitch. It's nothing too fancy. <laughs> Spoiler alert, we're just gonna do a crab stitch again because that's my favorite ending for a basket. Okay, so just an example of what it looks like. So it's pretty straight up this way. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this and just kind of pull it a little bit just to cinch it in. Not very much. And then you can do that a little bit, just a tiny bit more on each level or you can just do it like one or two levels and then it'll kind of do its own thing. But um, anyway, so that's just how you just kind of like make that shape. Okay, continuing on. Okay, so as you're sort of cinching up your sides, um, notice that these get a little bit bunchy. If you get to the point where they're like too bunchy, you have my permission to just jump over <laughs> and skip a few now and then. I don't think it'll make a difference. You're not gonna see it. Um, and it'll make it look, you'll, it'll, you'll still have that spread out part so you can see the fabric. Otherwise, it's just all crocheted on the edges there. So um, that's totally up to you if you want to do that. We're about to do the handles, so I'm going to do some quick little math for you. Okay, so what you want to do is you kind of want to figure out like where, how wide your hand is and about where you want your handles to be and just kind of guess at it. And then we're going to make sure that it's centered. So I'm thinking like here, like here okay and then you just kind of want to count and make sure that there are the same amount on both sides so one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven <laughs> I got that was lucky <laughs> and then you just want to do the same thing on the other side so um, so in the middle I have one two three four five six seven eight nine stitches in the middle so just make sure that that's centered and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna it's gonna be kind of weird because um, usually what we would do is just chain over the top of this so we would just single crochet chain over it and then when you come around the next time you just like crochet into that chain right except for now we have fabric that we're carrying so I'll just show you really quick hopefully i can remember i haven't done that other one i did that other one on the plane most of the time i'm just kind of making stuff up as i go i'm just being honest and um that was a month and a half ago so i can't remember exactly how i did it but we'll figure it out together Okay, so you can choose to start your little jump um, either in the stitch before or the stitch that it's in, but I'm gonna do the stitch that it's in just because that's right where that twist is, so I kinda wanna make sure that I get it solidly on there. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just continue on going over this, single crochets, but then we're gonna come back and we're gonna reinforce it with single crochets around the middle at the end. And that's how we'll get that nice solid look. So it's gonna look funny at first, but we'll come back and we'll, we'll do it, we'll fix it. Just make sure you do the right number of stitches. Okay, and then come down right here and single crochet right there. Okay, and continue around. Now on the next row, we'll just go right into those stitches. But when we're done, we're gonna come in and we're gonna reinforce this area right inside there. Okay, so continue on, do the same thing on the other side and then get it about as tall as you want it to be. I'm probably gonna go up another like two rows. Um, about where you want your hands. I think I did three. I did two more rows on this one. Okay, so on your final row around, 
I want you to do, we've been doing these tall single crochets, but I want you to stop doing that. I want you to do like super tight ones that um, cinch it down. And then that way when we do our crab stitch on the next row, it doesn't have this like massive amounts of space on it because you have so much yarn you're working with. So if you just tighten them down, it should do the trick. And to tighten them, all you have to do is pull that yarn. Okay, so we come down to the end. What I did was I cut the, <laughs> it kind of got twisted. So I cut this piece of fabric so that it comes to a gradual end there. So just kind of at a diagonal. And then we're just gonna tighten it down as we go until the very end. Okay, so there it kind of blends in. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go one single crochet row, just a regular single crochet row all the way around. You might want to shape it a little bit first just to make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. Okay, so one regular row of single crochet with no fabric, and then we will do our crab stitch. Okay guys, so for some reason, I know this is not a different video. This is the same video. It's just for some reason when I was recording that basket and I recorded the crab stitch, it didn't actually record. So luckily my daughter is working on this cute little project and um, it's just a little washcloth and she was doing a crab stitch. So I am gonna show it to you on this and hopefully you can see it. I get that it's white against white, which makes it a little bit rough, but um, I will try to zoom in so you can see it really well. So what you're gonna do is when you get to the end of your single crochets, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna grab the beginning single crochet and you're just gonna slip stitch to join, okay? Then you're gonna chain one and then you're gonna go backwards and you're gonna go back to the stitch before and go in and grab, pull up a loop and you're gonna get this little crisscross right there. And that's exactly what you want. You want that crisscross. And then you're gonna yarn over and go through both. So basically it's just a reverse single crochet. So back into this loop, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. Back into this one, yarn over and pull through all the way around. So keep doing that. It makes this cute little rounded edge, which I think is just perfect for the, I mean, I just, it's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite border and it's on so many videos. You'll, you can find it on practically any of my kitchen cloth videos, um, any of my basket videos, it's on all of them. So if this is not easy to see, check out one of those. Um, I'll link some of them in the description for you so you can get to them easily. Um, and I believe that we should be able to pick up, I've also upgraded my lighting. Hopefully you can see a difference. Um, so um, I, hopefully this will just, when I get to the end of this here, it's gonna pick up right back to where we left off on our little rag bag. And, um, and I will connect it and show you how to weave in your ends. When you get to the final stitch here, you're not gonna like knot it or anything like we normally would. There's a gap right there. We're just gonna pull this up. Tighten it a little, not a lot, and then grab yourself a needle into this stitch right here, just like you were continuing on. We're basically gonna weave in our ends this way. Actually, you want to kind of, well, no, you can do it up here. Okay. 
Okay, just kind of make it nice and even there. And then you're gonna uh, either grab a piece, an extra piece, or skip over a piece of yarn going back. And that's just to stop the yarn, because we're gonna go right back the way we came, and that's just to stop the yarn from coming right back out. This is um, weaving in your ends in using the back and forth method, which to me is the best method. <laughs> just my opinion. Nothing comes out. You don't get those little frayed edges. Okay. If you wanna give it extra support, you can do it again, but it's probably not necessary. Maybe go through just a couple. There we go. And trim that. Okay. So now we just have to do this part and make that look nice and finished right there. What do you think so far? It reminds me of when I was a kid, when we used to carve pumpkins, we always carved pumpkins on the floor on newspaper. And it looks like carving pumpkins on newspaper. That's what it reminds me of. Okay, so I think I've decided that I'm gonna actually edge this in white because I think just having that contrast will look nice right there. Um, also, I feel like I probably should have made this a little bit wider. So um, in order to make it look wider, I'm gonna kind of do a little trick. <laughs> we'll see how it works out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go in here, just pull up a piece of a loop. And just slip stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna single crochet around into the single crochets, which sounds easy enough, but up here we don't have any single crochets, so that's, um, I'm gonna do something funky there, which I just totally made up on the plane. <laughs> Okay, so in order to pretend this is a little wider, I think I'm gonna do a long single crochet out this way. Just kind of makes it look like it points out a little bit further. I just realized that this one was a little wider on the, than I did on this one for some reason. I don't know why it turned out that way, but it did. And then, let's see, I think just to make sure that it stays over there, we'll do another single crochet in that same spot. And then we'll come back. So when we come back, I'm gonna leave this tail to do later. Um, when we come back, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, see how these stitches, the bottom of the stitches go together like that. So you wanna do that on these two. But first, I'm gonna do this first one right here. You're gonna go under both of those loops so you can pull the bottom of that stitch together. Pull up a loop and then single crochet. Same thing over here. Also makes that nice and pointy right there where it was kind of rounded. I didn't really like the rounded look. Don't want this to be too tight. So keep it pretty loose. There. Okay, I'm gonna do one more thing, I'm gonna do this on the other side too. And then I'm gonna do one more little decorative thing to kind of pull it all together. Okay, so just for fun, just to kind of tie everything together, I'm gonna to see what it looks like to have a cute little surface crochet, surface stitch up here. We're gonna start on the corner. Pull up a loop. I'm gonna hold on to this piece because we're not gonna um, 
chain or anything. We're just going to come right back down into the next hole and we're going to slip stitch through that one. I'll do the same thing for every stitch. Just right under, I'm just doing it right underneath the crab stitch just, just to see if I like it. I'm just doing it right on top of the last row that had the fabric in it and see where that was where the, it came down to the end. I'm just jumping over and getting right back on top of where that fabric ended. Yeah, do we like that? You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I think I like it. I think it kind of pulls every th the cream from here to here to here. Kind of um, evens it all out. So finishing surface crochet is always a little bit awkward. So just do whatever you got to do to kind of make that um, a clean finish there. Show you what I do. So you kind of want this to continue. So I'm going to just go in here through to the back. And then I will knot it back here and weave in my ends. Like that. So that's one side. And then this side, I tend to just go right over the top of that, that first piece of yarn right there. So you have a nice clean finish, like a little chain link. So I'm going to weave in my ends, but I'm going to think I'm going to do this basket again or this handbag again um, with uh, some other colors. So stay tuned and I'll show you that at the end screen. Okay, here's the big reveal. We have the red, white, and blue for 4th of July. We have a nice little fall colored one using our black and white and um, our orange and cream colored. And then I did the purple one, which is slightly bigger and it has kind of more of a bottle neck shape here. Um, I encourage you, if you decide to do this project, I encourage you to just play with it. I um, changed the fabric like into a lighter color before I changed to the darker yarn. So it kind of looks like there's three transitions going on here, but really there's only two. So like I just, I changed the fabric for this section. I changed the yarn for this section. They kind of overlap in the middle and that's what gives it that sort of third stripe or that third layer in the middle there. So, and on this one, I think I changed color on the fabric like one, two, three, four, five, six times. Um, and then I only changed color on the yarn twice. So you could totally play around with it and do whatever. <laughs> My daughter's cat, shh, no, shush. I would love to see pictures of your completed work. So be sure to join us on my Facebook group at Janelle's Quarantine Crochet. And um, just, I would, I mean, everybody there loves to support and um, give lots of positive feedback. So be sure to post pictures there so I can see it. So um, the next project I'm gonna do, the next big project is going to be the same type of thing, but I'm gonna do a rag rug with big thick um, fleece. And I think I'm gonna do a couple of those in sort of a half of a circle shape. If you're inter interested in that, be sure to subscribe so that you can get a notification when that video comes out. Thanks for watching, bye.